Catch me if you can! and I were eating jammy jumbly biscuits. And so was Wolfie, even though he wasn't really allowed to. Oh. I was going to help Dad mend the beach hut roof. And Great Aunt Loretta, Grandpa's sister, had come round to chew some stuff from Mum's Bits and Bobs box. Stars, that's nice. Mr Mentor will like these. Great Aunt Loretta was going to help Mr Mentor the inventor with a new invention. Now, Mr Mentor the Inventor lives in the lighthouse in Sunny Sands. He's always coming up with really crazy inventions. Like this, the grassy buggle jumper. Only the bugs liked it even more than he did. Then there's this, the automatic hero static that gives you a new hairstyle every day. And this, the Huffer Puffer Pillow Fluffer. Everyone loves going to visit him in the lighthouse and trying things out. And he likes trying out other people's adventures too. Which was why Great Aunt Loretta was so excited. Oh, I'm so excited. Help me pack this up, you two. And then I'm off to the lighthouse. Oh, jammy jumblies. Oh. oh, that's right, Grandpa. Don't help. Trust you to escape. Little did oh. any of us know that today was going to be the day of Grandpa's greatest escape ever. Off to bed, Wolfie. I knew what Grandpa was thinking. If Loretta's going to help Mr Mentor with his invention, he may very well need our help too. We'd better go with her. But you can't climb up all those stairs in the lighthouse, Grandpa. No, but I'm sure I can find a way to get up there if I'm small. Not the shrinking cap, Grandpa! <laughs> Catch me if you can! You know when Grandpa shrinks, he can drive off in my car. He can chuff about in our Sunny Sands train. And he can get into the smallest places. Psst! Grandpa, she's coming, hide! Grandpa jumped into Great Aunt Loretta's bag. Yeah! <laughs> Grandpa gone for a little lie down, has he now? Typical. Ooh. I'll see you later with my invention, Grandpa. <laughs> oh, yes. Grandpa had gone with Great Aunt Loretta to the lighthouse. Ready, Jason? I was going to the beach hut with Dad. I'll just go get my hat. I had to have an idea, and fast. I ran into the kitchen and whipped some ribbon out of Mum's box. Then I ran back again. Dad, can we go to the lighthouse straight away? I think Aunt Loretta needs this. OK, to the lighthouse it is then. So Dad and I got into Campo and off we went. As soon as we arrived at the lighthouse, I dashed all the way up the stairs. But Great Aunt Loretta wasn't there. I'm sure she'll be here soon, Jason. Maybe she stopped off somewhere on her way. And I was right. She had. She was in Mr Whoops' shop. And so, of course, was Grandpa. Oh, I need some coloured tissue paper. Oh, oh, this is nice. Now, does it match the colour of my stars? She was going to find Grandpa. Oh, I can't find them. Oh, dear. Let me help. Oh! oh. I'm so sorry. Grandpa had hidden under Great Aunt Loretta's hanky and was making a dash for it. While Great Aunt Loretta and Mr Whoops cleared up all the things from her bag, Grandpa climbed onto some shelves behind the counter. Great Aunt Loretta had chosen her paper and it was time to go. There was only one thing Grandpa could do. Jump into her bag. But Grandpa missed. 
he landed in the jar of lemon bonbons. Goodbye, Mr. Wolf. This was a disaster. I was still waiting for Great Aunt Loretta at the lighthouse. And at last, she arrived. Oh, oh. here I am, Mr. Mentor. <laughs> oh, what are you doing here, Jason Mason? I bought this for Mr. Mentor. I thought he'd like it for his invention. Our invention, you mean? Doesn't he, Mr. Mentor? Uh, oh, yes. Our invention, yeah. Loretta. Yours and mine. And it's going to be absolutely fantastical. <laughs> Look what I've brought. While Great Aunt Loretta showed her paper to Mr. Mentor, I quickly looked in her bag for Grandpa. But he wasn't there. <gasps> Isn't it good that Mr. Whoops had all the colours we need? <laughs> have you been in Mr. Whoops' shop, then? Yes, I have, Jason. So? So, uh, I, uh... I have to go now. Bye. I realised Grandpa must be in Mr. Whoops' shop. I got back into Campo and I said, Dad, can we just go to Mr. Whoops' shop on the way to the beach? And Dad said, Well, I really need to fix the beach hut roof. And I said, But you know how you love sucking a toffee mint when you're fixing things. And Dad said, That's true. All right then, so long as you're quick. Who should be in Mr. Whoops' shop? But Miss Smiley, she was buying sweets and Mr. Whoops was putting them in little boxes for her. Can I have some strawberry laces, please, Mr. Whoops? <laughs> I had to find Grandpa before I bought the toffee mints for Dad. And suddenly, I saw him. I really hoped that Miss Smiley wasn't going to ask for lemon bonbons. Not lemon bonbons. Please, not lemon bonbons. Can I have some lemon bonbons, please, Mr. Whoops? Oh, lemon bonbons. They're your grandpa's favourites, aren't they, Jason? <laughs> Before I could do anything, Grandpa had been tipped into a box with a lot of lemon bonbons. I didn't have time to get Grandpa out, but I did have time to put the lid on. Thank you so much, Mr Whoops. Oh, you're welcome. So Miss Smiley set off for her cafe, <laughs> and Grandpa set off with her. I quickly bought some toffee mints and rushed out to Campo. Now, of course, I had to persuade Dad to go to the cafe because that's where Grandpa was heading. So I said, Hey, Dad, let's go to Miss Smiley's and buy some cherry chunks for tea. And Dad said, All right, Jason, but this must be our last stop. I couldn't believe that Mr. Mentor was in the cafe. I've come for some straws for our invention, Jason. It's going spectacularly well. Straws are no problem, Mr. Mentor. Come and choose. I've got lots of spectacular colours! Oh. <laughs> While they were gone, I looked for Grandpa. He was in one of those boxes on the table. But which one? He jumped out. Thanks, Jason. Now I just have to find a way of getting back to the lighthouse. But Grandpa, hide! Grandpa hid behind the cherry chunks. Really but before I could do anything, Grandpa jumped into Mr. Mentor's big coat pocket. Have a wonder bubble afternoon. <laughs> so, off went Mr. Mentor with Grandpa. I quickly bought some cherry chunks and then ran to find Dad. Back at the lighthouse, Great Aunt Loretta and Mr. Mentor had invented this. A little hot air balloon. And Grandpa had jumped out of Mr. Mentor's pocket. Oh, it's fabidiculous. Yes. Now all we have to do is make it fly. Mm. What can we use to make it fly, I wonder? I'll have a look. While they looked around for something to help the balloon fly, oh, Grandpa there. jumped off the shelf and into the balloon basket. Great Aunt Loretta found some bellows. Maybe we could puff it up into the air with these. Great idea. Quite marvellous. Oh, I'm full of marvellous ideas, I am. Poof, 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 poof. Great Aunt Loretta pumped the bellows and the balloon rose up out of Mr Mentor's hands. But oh, of course, it was Grandpa so... making the balloon fly. Grandpa using his magic. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, 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 it's flying. Oh, 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 absolutely marvellous. Oh, 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 yeah. Help the winds go! Oh. Oh. oh! And you all could do it! <laughs> Suddenly, I saw the balloon fly out of the lighthouse window. 
I guessed straight away that this was Mr. Mentor's new invention. And I could see who was in it too. It was heading this way. I had to distract Dad. And luckily, I had a reason to. Dad, look! Greta Loretta's coming! Oh. Aunt Loretta! Just then, Grandpa landed the balloon on the beach hut roof. He scrambled out and jumped down onto the sand. I ran to him, picked him up and put him in my pocket. Oh, look! There it is! Oh, that balloon knew where to come! Oh, yes! It is fabodiculous! Spectacularly fabodiculous! <laughs> We went home in Campo and I ran inside ahead of the others. I put Grandpa down on the floor, he whipped off his shrinking cap and came back to his normal size. Well, that was a great escape, Jason. Yes, and well done for getting the invention to work, Grandpa. I couldn't have done it alone. I'd still be in that box of bonbons if it wasn't for you. That's what I call teamwork, eh? Teamwork! <laughs> we got our balloon invention to work without any help from you, Grandpa. Oh, and how did you do that? <laughs> I used these. I puffed the balloon up into the sky with it, I did. You puffed it, did you? <laughs> if you don't look out, I'll puff you up into the sky and see whether you can fly. Puff, 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 puff. I don't need your help to fly, Loretta, thank you. Puff, puff, puff. With our magic and turn the world hairy Oh, how tricky! We've run out of spells in our hairy fairy tree But they don't care, they, they love to be hairy The ha ha Finding all the laughter in hairy land Ma, ha and Minnie And don't forget there's Nana And Chua ha ha, the hairy pet But up on the hill in Chateau Shampoo There's Boris Boo Hoo Boris is trouble, you wait and see But they don't care, they love to be hairy The ha ha hairy It's another hot day, Quiff Yep, the hairy sun's working too hard today, if you ask me <sighs> Oh, hi! <laughs> is it hot where you are? <laughs> it's scorching here in Hairyland Hey, do you remember that really hot day in Hairyland when the Ha Ha Hairy... Oh, 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 don't tell them! Shush! Oh. You'll spoil it, Quiff! <laughs> Once there was a really hot day in Hairyland. And when the sun is really hot, you want to visit the Curly Swirly Meadow. Because in the Curly Swirly Meadow, right by Ringlet River, the hair on the wifty wafty willow tree grows and grows. And it looks like a wifty wafty rainbow. And Mahaha always has a plan for it. Today, she'd picked some wifty wafty hair and was going to make something special out of it for everyone. Well, you know what Ma's like. Mahaha. She's got a heart of gold. A heart of gold. A heart of gold. She's always having fun. There's fun for everyone. Under the hairy sun. She's got a heart of gold. Mom's got a heart of gold. A heart of gold. And just look what Ma was making. Yes, she'd used the wifty wafty willow hair for something really special. Something that would hide the hairy sun and keep everyone cool. Yes, today was the day Ma made the hairy hidey suns. Now up on the hill at Chateau Shampoo, someone had found something. Can you guess who? 
Boris Boohoo, what's he gonna do? We were watching from the hairy cactus tree. Boris had found an old pot of spiky hair goop in a dusty old cupboard. And he was trying it out on Boise. <laughs> I think Boise's hair will go all spiky. <laughs> and Wiggy was right. It had gone all spiky. And suddenly, it gave Boris an idea. An idea to make him lots of money. He could use the spikes on the hairy cactus tree to make lots of spiky hair goo. So Boris started to pick the cactus leaves. And we had to keep dodging out of the way. Before long, Boris and Boise were squelching the leaves in a big tub. And we were watching from our hiding pipes. And now Boris had to get all the spiky bits out of the goop. He needed a big strainer to strain the goop. So he decided to look through his hairy staring to see if he could find something in Hairyland to use as a strainer. And he saw Ma with a hairy Heidi son. And Pa and Minnie and Nana were admiring it. And it looked like the perfect strainer. Boris was so happy. <laughs> but how was he going to get a Heidi son to strain his cactus goop? He needed a plan. Boris needs a plan, a plan. He needs a plan as quick as he can. He needs a plan, he needs it quick. He needs to plan a clever trick. What'll it be? What'll it be? What'll it be? Welcome back. Boris's plan was to send Boise to visit the Ha Ha Harrys with a little tub of spiky hair goop. Boise was very happy because he would see Minnie. And Boris told Boise to take them inside. <laughs> to show them how it worked. <coughs> What's he up to? Not sure. He wants Boise to get all the ha ha hairies inside. I think we should follow Boise. <laughs> so off we went on our papa picky. Follow me round hairy land, round hairy land. I am quick and I am wiggy with, with a hairy fairy band. <laughs> <laughs> a little later in the ha ha hairies garden. Everyone was very excited because Boise was showing them all the spiky hair goop. He told them all to come inside and he'd show them how it worked. And as they all went in, we landed in the hairy pear tree. Now up on the hill at Chateau Shampoo, Boris checked that all was going to plan. The Ha Ha Hairies had all gone inside. And Ma had left the hairy Heidi son in the garden. So off he rushed to the Ha Ha Hairy's garden. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the Ha Ha Hairy's house, Pa looked like this. <laughs> Boris tippy-toed into the Ha Ha Hairy's garden. He hid and peeped. <gasps> Meanwhile, back inside the Ha Ha Harry's house, Ma looked like this. <laughs> Boris tippy toed towards the hairy Heidi son. Oh, he grabbed it off the table. But someone was watching him. Chihuahua. Meanwhile, back in the Ha Ha Harry's house, Minnie looked like this. <laughs> there was no way Chiwa would let Boris steal Ma's Heidi son. <laughs> but Boris had another plan. He'd take some wifty wafty hair and make his own Heidi son strainer for his cactus goop. Back in the Ha Ha Harry's house, 
Nana look like this. <laughs> when they all came outside, they saw that Chiwa was sitting in the basket of wifty wafty hair. Ah. Maybe he'd like a Heidi son, thought Ma. Papa? Then Ma set to work to make Heidi sons for everyone, even Boise. <laughs> but back in the factory at Chateau Shampoo, Boris had made this. A big strainer out of wifty wafty hair to strain his cactus goop. He was pleased with it. But it wasn't nearly as good as Ma's Heidi sons. <laughs> and in the Ha Ha Harry's garden, Ma's work was done. You can twirl. You can swirl. With, with your wifty wafty Heidi sons. You can whirl. Up or down to the ground, you're twirling, swirling, whirling around. Yes, you're whirling and swirling around. Twirling in the curly, swirly meadow, round the wifty wafty willow tree. Whirling, swirling, dizzy in your head. Oh, look at Ma, and you will see. One, two, three. Whoa! You can fly in the sky with your wifty wafty Heidi sons. Held up high, up, up through the heavy cloud. You're flying, flying, flying around. Yes, you're flying, flying around. Up, up through the hairy cloud, you're flying, flying, flying around. Yes, you're flying, flying around. <laughs> Boris was so shocked to see them all fly past that he'd fallen in his trainer on the hairy cactus spikes. If Boris had just asked Ma to make him a Heidi son, it would have been fine. Oh. And everyone would have helped. Oh, yep, but Boris never asks. He's too proud. Mm. Silly Boris. Silly, silly Boris. <laughs> <laughs> twirling and twirling around. Oh, I'd love a hairy Heidi son. Mm. Quiff, when do you make me a hairy Heidi son? Uh, you don't need one. We can fly with the Papa Picky. Oh, but the Papa Picky isn't all twirly and swirly. Swirly and swirly. Uh, careful. Uh, you'll fall. The ha ha Harry's. Hey, Willie boy, you're supposed to be peeling spuds in the galley. The captain will be up in mad if he catches you skylarking. Watch it. Here he comes. Pirate William, how often do I have to tell you the suffering seagulls? Why didn't I think of it before? Willie, you're a genius. <laughs> You've given me the very idea I was looking for. Oh, stone of crow's nest. Me nerves is shattered. Very upset making, I'm sure, Pirate B. Willie, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What's he up to, then? He's making some. It, 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 watch out, he's coming. Careful now. Easy does it. Remember, this is the greatest invention since the wheel. 
Uh, put it down on the deck. Y oh, dear. Whatever of you be to go to dad this time, Captain. Hey, <laughs> it's a kite. Precisely, Willie. But this is no ordinary kite. It is a kite designed to carry a man high above the masthead. Uh, let me explain. <laughs> In the ordinary way, one can only see a few miles from the crow's nest. But with this monster kite floating high above the ship, we shall be able to see for miles, spot enemy ships long before they see us, and pounce on them unawares. <laughs> it's the sensation of the century. Oh, yeah? But how'd you take off in the first place? Air currents, Pirate Barnabas. The forward motion of the ship, the upward movement of the breeze, Simple when you have an education like mine. <laughs> right, now who's going up first? Chippering jellyfish. Where have they all gone? Well, it looks like it's going to be you, Captain. Oh, very well. Uh, master mate, uh, wherever you are, I want the weather forecast. Yeah, uh, aye, aye, Captain. Uh, that is, uh, uh, yes, Captain. Uh, <coughs> here is the shipping forecast. Winds fresh to strong and variable. Oh, well, that's all I need, Master Mater. Come, Tom, to the poop deck and carefully. Very soon, all was ready. Pugwash sat in his kite while Willie stood by on the winch. Prepare for takeoff. More sail, me hearties. Full speed ahead. Aye, aye, Captain. Full speed it is. And I'm away. <laughs> Fantastic! Higher, Willie! Higher! Aye, aye, Captain! Just think of it. I could be free. Free to... Can't hear! Say it again! Could be free, I said! Could be free! He <laughs> he, could be free! Aye, aye, Captain! Here we go! Whoa! <laughs> Oh dear, let's toad it. It's all right. We're coming, Captain. Well, hurry up then. The water. <laughs> it's wet. <laughs> Staggering starfish. What about me? It's all right, Captain. We got the kite. Yeah, the sensation of the century. Couldn't risk losing that. Aye, the greatest invention since the wheel. <laughs> Don't worry, Captain. We'll come back for you later. <laughs>